Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Clutch Situation. Uh, some of you may have noticed that I've been absent for a while, and that is because I've been pretty busy. Uh, it's the start of a new school year. I am a university professor, and I happen to be wearing a couple of extra hats this year. Now, they're hats that I chose. Um, and so far, everything has been going really, really well. It's, it's just a matter of how much time one has, and that means that I haven't had as much time for YouTube. Now, one of the huge advantages that I have as a human being is that I have really great friends. Um, and I'm super grateful for my friends. And uh, one of my friends, my best friend, DJ, is a big supporter of the channel and of my endeavors. And uh, at some time in the past, on a video, apparently, I don't remember this, I had commented on the Kuratoga dive and how it was a very popular pencil that had been released recently. It is a rather expensive pencil. It's going for about $75, I think. Uh, and so apparently I told y'all that, you know, um, I definitely wanted to review it. It was just a matter of cost and DJ being the generous individual that he is, uh, picked one up. And when we met for our little, uh, friend get together that we have on Labor Day weekend every year, uh, he had this waiting for me. And so, uh, DJ, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really excited to showcase this on the channel. Um, and since I've been absent for a while, there are going to be two videos that are released in quick succession here. Uh, this video will likely go out today, September 28th, 2024. And um, my next video, which is a partner video that I'm very excited to showcase for all of you, will release on October 1st in celebration of the opening of a Kickstarter campaign. So look forward to that video coming out on October 1st. So let's dive into the Kuratoga dive. <laughs> okay. And see what's going on. I'll be using one of my campus notebooks that were featured in a prior video. Um, and, uh, right off the bat, the Kuratoga dive comes in a really attractive box. And so let's open it up and see what we have here. Ooh, Kuratoga Dive. Now, of course, I put it back in the box after using it extensively. Um, I don't review anything here on the channel um, without writing with it for a significant amount of time first. Um, just right off the bat, I think something that is really interesting with this is that, um, one, I love the semi-gloss coating on the Kuratoga dive. It's just really cool. It's, it's not glossy. It's not matte. It's somewhere in between. Uh, the color for this one is like a sea green, I guess. Um, when I look at it and you know, this is just an example of how different, uh, people, uh, interpret different colors in their brain because we're all different in terms of color interpretation. If you think back to the, um, dress thing that happened, uh, gosh, I don't know, maybe like a decade ago or more where it was like, is it a gold dress or a, or a blue or black dress? And people were debating it. And, um, there's no point in getting angry over these sorts of things, folks, because just because you experience life in a different way from another person doesn't mean that one of those ways is right or wrong. Uh, there are differences in humanity. And one of those is color interpretation. Also recently something that's cropped up online and I think it died pretty quickly. It didn't, it, it, it hasn't had, I don't think the longevity that the dress thing had when it came out. Um, but that was that, uh, people are taking an instrument, a test online that, rates whether you are more biased in favor of green or blue. And so I think that this has actually happened for me. I view this as cobalt blue. It's probably one of my favorite blues to be fair. So it's a win-win for me regardless. Um, DJ and my wife see this as more of a green color, which is fine by me. Green is my favorite color. So it's pretty much a win-win for me all the way around, but I just think it's interesting how there can be this different difference in terms of how people interpret color. And the Kuratoga dive does come in uh, several different colors if you're interested in exploring those. All right, let's open up the box and see what happens. Ha <laughs> Oh, there's an instruction sheet that comes with it. Kuratoga 
Dive is, of course, of Japanese manufacture because it is from Mitsubishi uh, Uni. And, uh, well, Uni is the, is the specific branding of this. Um, it's obviously a Kuratoga pencil, and so it has a Kuratoga engine on it. But the Kuratoga is different from many other uh, Uni pencils in that in the modern tradition of the Kuratoga line, there has been continual innovation that has been happening with the Kuratoga line. And we can see it in uh, several ways with this particular pencil. Um, first off, the obvious one is that this is a capped pencil. And we love a capped mechanical pencil because you get all the advantages of having a mechanical pencil, but also with a cap so that you don't have to worry about pocket safety at all. Um, in addition, uh, this particular pencil also has a unique take on the Kurotoga mechanism in that you can set the amount of lead that is... Uh, the amount of rotation, I should say, um, and the amount of automatic lead feed during writing by twisting this max min device on the end right here, which I just think is is interesting, will be interesting for us to explore. What we're going to do here in this video is I will test out min and test out max. So that we can see if there's a significant difference between the two. Um, but ultimately you can customize this with five settings, min in between mid min. <laughs> let me start over min in between min and mid mid in between mid and max and max. Okay. So we'll start off on min and we'll go from there. Uh, another key innovation of this pencil, I think, is that it's automatic feed. You never have to knock it once you get going. So that's a cool thing. Um, one less thing to worry about. Um, it can be written with as exists right here or with a magnetic enclosure here. It can be written capped if you prefer a slightly longer instrument. Okay. And so with it capped, Word of the armpit on the baby panda, or without it capped, I should say, and with it capped, we're just a little bit longer than that. So it adds just a little bit to it. But, you know, different people have different preferences and different feels for mechanical pencils. And so this is just something that's interesting for us to investigate. So, you know, I would add the magnetic closure feature both on the end and here as an additional feature that is new on Kuratoga products. We have a really strong metal pocket clip, which is really nice to see because most Kuratoga pencils have plastic pocket clips. They save manufacturing money and they lower the price by having a lower quality pocket clip. But you know, this is a really good example of a writing utensil that if you want better features, you're gonna pay for better features. Okay, it says Unikuratoga 0.5 on the clip here. It says Japan down here on the bottom part of the pencil. And then one more feature that uh, I would consider to be a hidden feature here that you're not really aware of um, unless you read the instructions here. Okay, so there's more instructions on the, uh, on the back as well about what you can and cannot do. You know, feel free to pause the video if you want to read in Japanese or English. Um, it does have a pencil or a <laughs> of course, of course it has a pencil because it is a pencil. It does have an eraser underneath here. And I just want to point that there is not a lot of wiggle in the eraser dock, which is one of my long standing complaints about Kurotoga pencils. I like minimal wiggle in an eraser dock, and this is a lot more sturdy than what you would normally expect for a Kurotoga pencil. But let me get to the feature here. The feature that I'm interested in here is that you can post this pencil with lead extended and it will not negatively impact the lead at all. So you don't even have to do you know what I what you saw me doing reflexively, which is put the lead back in. Um, you can just directly dock it without having to worry about that. And 
As features on mechanical pencils, that's probably for me the highlight of the Kuratoka dive. It's that a lot of the quote unquote annoying rituals that you have to do with mechanical pencils in order to uh, store them after you're done writing with them, they are not really issues on the Uni Kuratoga dive. And I think that that really needs to be emphasized as much as possible. Okay, so let's turn to the inside of our canvas notebook and we're going to be doing some writing and then we'll do some reviewing of the uni kuratoga dive so let's rock and roll i'm going to start this at min okay and we're going to go from there now my uh uh my goal here is to try to do a comparison between min and max and i don't know how well this is going to work Okay, um, it's not like I have a ruler on me or anything, but we do have the um, uh, the grid here. And so what I'll do is I will probably mark off on the grid where we are at min or where we are on max to see if we can uh, note what the difference is. One thing that I discovered right here that I hadn't discovered before because it's auto advance is that you cannot knock the pencil when the cap is posted. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I want to like start off at just like one click. Okay, and go from there. And so we're going to start with min. We just have one tiny little click, and we are going to compare min versus max in terms of lead rotation and advancement. Now, I wrote a little there, so we'll reset to one click, okay, and then we're going to do some writing. Okay, here we go. We ready? Gandalf the Grey rides Shadowfax through the Ritter Mark. Shout out to my Lord of the Rings fans out there. Okay. Now, notice how we do have advancement here, but it's worn down pretty significantly, almost to the point where it's imperceptible for me. So some people like to have the tip of their pencil really close to the paper when they write. Okay, let's compare that to max. Okay, whoops. I don't want to unscrew it. I just want to turn this, okay, to max. And uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did before, and we're going to do the same writing. We knock once, okay? And so um, the advancement here was imperceptible. Let's do max now. Gandalf the Grey rides... Shadowfax through the Ritter Mark. Okay, what do we got? We definitely can see some more lead extended. I'm wondering if you would have to write for an extended period of time to notice the difference between min or max. But one of the things that you could do is like imagine this little bit of extension multiplied over writing over a couple of pages. Maybe you'd note the difference. Maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. And so uh, for me... It's pretty inconclusive whether or not setting it to max or min really, truly makes a difference. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, there are psychological factors for mechanical pencils. And maybe the mere existence of this potential uh, difference for lead rotation is enough for some people. Okay? I mean, it never hurts for a company to explore features. Um, am I convinced that it's a significant feature? No. Could it be a significant psychological feature? Maybe. Okay. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and review then the Uni Kuru Toga Dive 0 
millimeter. Okay, and we have our standard array that we have here on clutch situation. Uh, and that is writing experience. which includes things like the grip and how it feels in my hand when I'm writing. We have quality of manufacture. We have features. And we have cost. And then we'll lay down some of the pros and cons of the pencil. Okay, so writing experience. I'm going to give the Kurotoga Dive a great, and part of the reason for that is that I do like the grip of this pencil. It has these little elevated uh, plastic nubs right here, which provide enough of a grip for me that is it's more significant than a smooth grip. And uh, I really like the feel of it in the hand. The other thing that I want to notice here is that, or note here, that even when it is uh, posted, it is pretty lightweight. I don't see hand fatigue being an issue with this pencil at all. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Um, quality. Well, here's the tricky thing. Dare I, dare I take this thing apart? I'm a little weary about taking this thing apart because I don't want to, you know, mess anything up, but I think that I can at least just do a little bit of unscrewing here and that's what it looks like unscrewed. My guess is, is that I could probably pull this apart, but I'm just not going to do that. Okay. This is maybe part of the rotation mechanism I would think right here. Okay. So let's get this reassembled. Um, as you saw that there are plastic internals, which whenever we have a mechanical pencil, um, one of the things that we have to be aware of is that uh, any rotating parts that you have that are plastic will eventually wear down over time. Okay. Uh, the feel of the outside of the pencil is great. Is it metal? Uh, it it, it feels like metal, but I think based upon looking on the internals, it's just really well finished plastic. Okay. The pocket clip is obviously metal. Um, and so for quality, I'm actually going to go with good on this one. Okay. Um, you're paying for the Mitsubishi name. You're paying for the features, which are superb by the way. Okay. And we'll write some of those down in the pros. Um, and, you know, it's overall a very attractive piece. I think what we have going on here is that this is a pencil that is intended to have enough extra features to compete at a price point with more expensive mechanical pencils. There's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Uh, cost is expensive. Okay, we're looking at approximately 75 USD. Okay. So, so far so good. Okay. Um, this is by far the most impressive Kurotoga pencil that I've ever held. And if I had had the means to purchase this, or if I have the means to purchase one in the future, I would definitely purchase this. I don't really feel the need to get this in multiple different colors, even though I really like it because reasonably priced pencils like the Pentel Sharp sort of cover my multiple colors interest, but let's go ahead and dive into the pros, okay? So the pros are we have a Kurotoga mechanism, okay, that is customizable question mark. Okay, I do want to point out here that I've had this set at max, and it seems like it is significantly longer than just the short little test that we did up here. And so I'm wonder I'm wondering right now if longer tests are fairer. Okay. With regards to the lead extension mechanism, it does seem to work. Whether or not it's significant enough for you. 
that's a question. So I'm definitely going to list it as a pro because it does appear to work. And honestly, I'm already considering setting it at mid because that's a little bit longer than what I would like from lead breakage for lead breakage purposes. Okay. So we have a Kuratoga Cur mechanism. We have a good grip. Okay. With the little nubs, we have a strong metal. Whoops. See, there we go. Let's see if I can just keep writing, even though lead broke. I can. Strong metal pocket clip. I am right up against the paper, though. So I'm going to switch me to max to see if I can extend out a little bit more. Um, we have magnetic posting. We have... Uh, I'm going to call it a rigid eraser dock, which is really a, a personal thing for me. I don't know if it's ex as exciting for you. Okay. But, but the fact that I can erase without it going all over the place is, is pretty cool for me. Now I did just click when I erased, which does happen. So, you know, that's, that's something that we should keep in mind that, you know, if you erase, you are going to end up clicking the mechanism. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, I'm out of space. We're going to have to move cons down. That's okay. Because now I'm pretty sure this is a standard Kuratoga eraser. And so what I love about this is that even if this tiny little eraser runs out pretty quickly, I'm going to be in a position to replace it with other Kuratoga erasers pretty easily. Um, because I don't use my other Co Kuratoga pencils as often. So that's a little advantage that I have, um, given that it is proprietary. Um, I got to be careful that I don't miss this. We have an auto advance mechanism. Which companies have been exploring more this decade compared to prior decades. Um, compa certainly compared to last decade. Okay. Uh, so cons, plastic internals is my big gripe. Okay. Uh, honestly, I can't, oh, here's another one. Um, I think that light weighting is a good thing for me. Okay. Less hand fatigue, but we have plastic internals and some externals which is a reduction in overall quality in my mind. Um, but this is easily a top 15 pencil. The top 15 will be changing in July of next year. Okay. And the Uni Kuratoga dive definitely deserves a spot. I don't know where I'm going to place it yet, but um, this is probably one of the more innovative pencils to come out of a company in a while. And I can't emphasize that enough for all of you. And so I hope that that is something of interest to you. And even if the Unicuratoga dive is out of your price range, you know, maybe it's something that you save up for over time, because I think that this would be a really uh, beloved legacy pencil um, for a lot of people. But I would just watch out for the internals wearing out over time would be, would be my only reservation of it. Okay. So DJ, thanks again for picking this up for me. I really appreciate it. Definitely my favorite Kuratoga pencil of all time. Uh, if you have the means, check it out, um, because it's just a great pencil. Um, thanks everybody for, uh, watching clutch situation. Remember, I'm going to be having a sponsor video releasing on October 1st. So keep that in mind. I'm going to shoot that sponsor video right now and have it uh, geared up and ready to release, uh, on October 1st. So thanks for watching everybody. Have a great day.